like you're a millionaire for a night, amen? So what you here is the candy and all that stuff. I guess you, we're kind of anticipating. See, it'd just be you and Jesus there if you're single, amen? But if you're married and you win this, then, or you can give it as a gift to someone, too, in your family or something, or somebody at work. But we're doing this as a raffle, and uh, there's a little, the shampoos, and wow, there's stuff in there. And, but the overall, the best part is that there is a, an overnight stay and, uh, in the hotel, and it's a nice one. I don't know if it's the Hyatt or the Marriott, but I'll ask you. Amen. But it's, it's, it's good. Amen. And you're going to be blessed. And this is going to help us raise, the, we're doing this for uh, the race finances for some things. And, um, and so I thought, I love the idea that she had. Uh, how many like to get blessed? Yes. See, a lot of us like to get blessed, but sometimes to get blessed, you got to invest. So, you know what I mean? So, what we're going to do is, uh, I think she said, and you're going to say, wow, tickets, the raffle tickets are 10 bucks each. A lot of people, a lot of people for the overnight thing don't realize that that's like, you know, 70, 80 bucks for the hotel, that you may only throw in 20 bucks and win. See, when it's that high, you just don't see a lot of tickets in there. So that gives you a greater chance, amen? amen. If a couple wins this, this might be the breakthrough you need, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so we would say if a couple wins this, get a babysitter, amen? And then you go and enjoy yourselves. And if you're single, uh, just go and enjoy yourself, amen? <laughs> Alone with Jesus. She'll tell you more about it. I thought she was going to be in here, but I, I, she constantly keeps going back there in the CE to help out because she wants us to have a quality CE. She's, she knows that my wife is constantly saying, we want to have a quality CE, and she keeps going back there. And in the meeting, I said, I don't want you to go back there no more. I want somebody else to see that, that, that there needs to be quality back there. And they say, you know what, God, if you can use anybody, use me. Because if you see the need, then we should be trying to meet the need. Yes. See, God blesses the people that catch it. He blesses people that say, you know what, uh, they trust me. They, they want to serve me. And then when they serve, because uh, we're going to take our CE, I think, from a, from a three to at least a nine in 2011. Amen? Amen. That means we're going to have to invest our time, our talent, and our money in order to see it become something. Because, see, that's a generation that yet to praise God in life. Amen? Their kids got shaped and formed them, but we paved the way. And there's teachers sitting in here. You wait to get behind here and teach. And you know what? So you can break it down simple back there. You'll never be any good up here. Amen? Yeah. Satan, the, Satan's waiting on somebody to think they got it together and come up here. Mm -hmm. Yet they don't have a heart. See, my heart was always back there with those young people. That's where I learned to preach. That's where I learned. Until we got to a point where I had an audience outside. They didn't go in the sanctuary. They hung outside the cubicles. I wouldn't get mad if somebody wanted to hear you preach back there and then the usher says, Pastor Dave back there listening to the person breaking it down in the CD. I wouldn't be mad because I know I was that person at one time. Amen. My pastor didn't get mad or maybe he didn't know. But he didn't get mad. <laughs> Victory Outreach is ready to go to another level worldwide. Amen. I'm ready to go to another level right here in Rancho. I'm like a laser beam right now, and I'm asking God, whatever my barriers are that are stopping you from doing whatever you want to do in my life, reveal them to me so that we can fight together against them. See, we need to be a church that comes in agreement with what God wants to do in our life. A lot of times our first focus is to do something for God, but see, you ain't at that level yet. See, there's still a lot of tests that we got to pass, that we got to prove that God already knows if we can make it, but see, our flesh needs to see that our spirit man is in control. Can you say amen? Yeah. And so I wanted to preach this message tonight that it can help everyone here because a, a lot of people begin their Daniel fast either last Monday or next Monday. We start ours next Monday. But a lot of people got the misconcept of a Daniel fast. A lot of people think that we just, you know, you just eat vegetables and God releases a blessing to you. That ain't it. See, a lot of people didn't even know that Daniel was 90 years old. When he got, when he was on the Daniel fast, the Daniel fast was he didn't want to be a part of what the king was doing. See, the king opposed God. The king didn't have, he didn't uh, regard God. And so he said, listen, let's all live a certain lifestyle and you guys come over here and eat from my table. And they said, no, we can't do that. God has a diet for us. How many know God has a diet for us? Yes. God has a diet. 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. See, we eat of the bread of life. We eat of Jesus. But there's a lifestyle that sometimes our family members or friends, they try to get us to live outside of what God has called us to live. They say, you ain't no fun. You're acting like a holy roller. But see, Daniel said, listen, you can call me what you want to call me, but a king, just let us eat the food that God appointed us to. And you'll see that, you know, we'll still be able to do what you're asking us to do because they were in captivity. How many know we got to obey the laws of the land? Amen. Amen. And so he was saying we can still obey the laws of the land, but our diet is something that God has given us in order for us to be who we are. Said so they had a kosher diet. Say kosher diet. Kosher diet. Now, I'm not trying to get y'all to be kosher people, kosher diet, but you need to know the truth because sometimes we get ranting and raving about the Daniel fast and then you find yourself at the end of the year doing the same things that you said you didn't want to do after the Daniel fast. Because a lack of understanding brings destruction. Jesus, or God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Stand with me real quick and turn to Matthew chapter 6. I want to talk to you tonight about the power of fasting with prayer. Fasting with prayer. I'm in a zone right now, and fasting with prayer is going to be the key to my breakthrough with my wife, with my family, with my church, with, the, with God in my personal life. And it's going to be your uh, a catalyst for you. See, a lot of us have been battling in 2010. Say, say, raise your hand if it was hard for you in 2010. Yeah. Keep your hand up if it seemed like you kind of drifted a little bit in 2010. Yeah. Honestly. See, and what I mean by drifting was you started off 2010 with the vow to pray for an hour. And then you prayed for an hour for a while, to about an hour of power. But after a couple of months, you found yourself really just standing there talking to God for five minutes and looking for something else to do after 10. See, you started to drift. What I mean by drifting and what the Bible means drifting, it means the spiritual disciplines that used to govern your life are now not in control of your life anymore. They're not governing your life. So with fasting and prayer, God's going to restore you. Tell your neighbor, he's going to restore you. Matthew chapter 6, amen? We have a great vision we have to carry. It's heavy. It's not easy. It requires so much of us. And if we try to do it in the arm of the flesh, we're going to fail. And then when we begin to fail, everybody around us begins to fail because a lot of people draw energy from the people that are here right now. See, you used to be an encourager, but when you got discouraged, you stopped encouraging people, and now you just worry about what you're going through. And God says that's not the way it works. Proverbs 11.25 says those who refresh others in return refresh themselves. How many need some refreshing, or is that just me? Amen. I need some refreshing, so I need to refresh you. And God says for being faithful, for dealing with people for me, I'm going to deal with your business. Matthew 6, verse 16 says, moreover, when you fast, see, God's expecting you and I to fast. He says, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. See, don't fast and go to work and people look at you know, you put yourself in a bad position in the break room and, you know, you're looking at their food and you're like this and they're saying, what's the matter? Are you going to eat? And you say, well, no, not at least for 21 days I'm not going to eat. And they say, oh, you must be religious. You're fasting. God said, don't do that. Instead, he says, listen, they just figured their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. He says, assuredly, I say to you, they already have their reward. They got it from men. But if you want it from God, he says, but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. But your Father in heaven, who is in a secret place, a secret place. Secret place. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. Say openly. openly. In other words, God said, I'll make it apparent that I'm validating you in front of everybody. Fasting is a way to draw us away from our normal life. Some of us are living normal, mediocre lives. But I'm here to tell you after I pray and you hear the message, it's because God wants to take you further than you've ever been in your life. Amen. He wants to take you further. That's why there were so many barriers in my life, my wife and you. There were so many barriers because God's trying to take us further than we've ever been. But there's going to be barriers. And fasting is a way for God to bring the barriers down. One of the main barriers is our enemy, which is our enemy. See, if God can get us out the way, then he won't struggle with getting the devil out the way. Amen? So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much, and I pray that the message tonight fills the hearts of your people, that revelation comes to them, that God, that prayer won't be just a language. It will be a lifestyle. God, I pray right now that you use me, that you anoint the ears of the hearer, that you anoint the hearts of the hearer, that the two walk together because they agree, and that you are able to do great exploits in the hearts of your people. 
This is our season. This is our season because of what you want to do in our life. So I pray that the spiritual discipline of fasting with prayer would come in like a wave, a rushing mighty wind in Victory Outreach Rancho Cordova, Lord God. And that there will be a manifestation of the power of God in our lives. We thank you and love you so much. And everyone say it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say,